Welcome to Monticello Christian Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. Let's begin this worship service by going before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, come dwell amongst us this morning. Inhabit our praise. You have opened the doors to us to your true service. We are encouraged to become involved in ministries of peace and justice. To open up our hearts that your word would be reflected in our lives. May the light of promise be reflected in your spirit, which rests in each of us. Get us ready to worship you. Guide our lives as we learn more of what you have done for us. It's your name we pray. Amen. Let us now go before the Lord in prayer, not only on behalf of ourselves, but upon those that we know. Let us pray. Precious Holy Spirit, you call us into your presence to be used as a light to this world, but far too often we get caught up in being in one thing or another, and we lose sight of your mission that you set before us. As we, as your people, we fracture into pieces. We go our separate ways, forgetting we need each other to be whole. You have given us your word to be our guide, but we turn our backs on what we see as rules and regulations, fearful that we will not live up to your expectations. Help us see with new eyes and to hear with open hearts the liberating word of the Spirit that strengthens and revives and enables, enables us to be and do all that you call us to be and do. Help us to hear your word, O Lord, as it instructs us and calls us to be closer to you. O oh, Spirit of freedom, help us to be faithful witnesses to your law of love and unity. We thank you that you hear us as we lift before you the names of those who are on our church prayer list, as we lift up those who are on our hearts, as well as humbly submit ourselves before you, Lord, in these few moments of silence. Precious Lord, we know change and challenge are always difficult. We are more inclined to turn our backs on opportunities of service than pitch in to effect the needed changes that will promote healing and wholeness. 
Forgive us when we give lip service to you and then slip into inaction. Give us courage to be willing disciples and help us to be people of promise and hope. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray, for it was he who taught us to pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It says in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 20 and 21, I'm not praying only on their behalf, but also on behalf of those who believe in me through their testimony that they will all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. I pray that they will be in us so that the world will believe that you sent me. The power of the Lord's table is most clearly evident in the times of greatest trial. When we partake together, we see a clear display of the unity that Jesus is praying about in this passage. When every disciple partakes of the same emblems of communion, it testifies as, as a singleness to the body of Christ. When the world sees us unify among a diversity of believers... There will be a growing longing to seek its source, and its source is Jesus Christ, who on the night of his death gathered with his disciples to share a meal. And he first took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks to God for it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, and as often as you shall eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks to God for it, he gave it to his disciples and said, This is my blood which is shed for you, and as often as you shall drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. As we partake of the bread and of the cup, remember that our participation in this table is a part of our testimony of Jesus' redemptive power at work in our life. This practice is a witness to the world that Jesus is real. As Jesus draws us from the margins into this great feast to healing, he also draws us from death to new life. Each day calls us to minister to others in warm hospitality, healing mercies, and the promise of resurrection and new life. We respond to this marvelous call through our giving of, of our tithes and offerings as well as the immaterial possessions that we have. Let us support the mission and the ministry of this church 
by our gifts and by the giving of our time and of our God-given talents for his glory now and always. Amen. Scripture passage this morning comes to us from the book of 1 John, chapter 5, beginning in verse 6. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are in agreement. We accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his son. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. We're in the third Sunday of our series focusing on building these fundamentals of what we believe. This uh, series is called I Believe, and we seek to look at today, I Believe in the Holy Spirit. Even over three Sundays, to broach the depth of a topic that is God, it is, it's a difficult one. But it's one that I love so much. And I hope that you're able to draw from the marrow of Scripture and of these messages and, and of the revelation of God that we can come to a greater understanding of what our faith is about, our understanding of God and, and the role that we play in, in our faith in Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit so that when we have an opportunity to give an answer for the hope that we have, we are prepared. Today we're looking at the Holy Spirit. And, and I'm wearing today my red stole, which is reserved really only for Pentecost Sunday. And I personally happen to love it. I love the color red, and I love this stole. And so I'm breaking with tradition so I can bring before us and illustrate the Holy Spirit. On the edge of my stole is a picture of a dove and three circles. Uh, an imperfect image of the Trinity highlighting the person of the Trinity that is the Holy Spirit. We look at the Holy Spirit today, and there's a, a writer that I, I really enjoy. I'm a fan uh, of Francis. I'm, I'm a Francis Chan fan. <laughs> um, he's a, a, an incredible uh, pastor and writer, and he wrote a book that, to me, really highlighted something. The book is called Forgotten God, that, that we often neglect the person of the Holy Spirit in our study and in our in our talk and in our teaching and and we speak widely about God and the person of God the Father we as believers as Christians little Christs those who follow Christ we seek and talk about and 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 often have upon our minds Jesus but how often are we fully focused on the Holy Spirit how often do we address a prayer perhaps to the Holy Spirit uh, how much do we take to uh, have our conversations to or about the Holy Spirit? That we recognize that the Holy Spirit is, is not a mere spirit, not merely an extension of God the Father, not merely an agent of Jesus the Son, that is the third person of the Trinity. It's not uh, subordinate to the eternal God, but eternal God. It is 
as Francis Chan points out, perhaps forgotten. How very precarious it would be for us to forget the Holy Spirit. Many names come along with the Holy Spirit, as we've seen with God the Father, as we've seen with God the Son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit, we have the Hebrew, Ruach. This, the word for spirit in Hebrew is Ruach. And it means spirit. It means also breath. It means wind. The same can be said of pneuma, which is the Greek word for spirit, wind, uh, 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 breath. We have the Holy Spirit addressed as comforter. We have the Holy Spirit addressed as, as counselor, one who counsels even as much as the legal sense, which, which the Greek word for that is paraclete. And it literally means one who comes alongside. And, and uh, many youth pastors over the, over the time that I've, I've heard, or even pastors themselves, they help us remember the word paraclete. We put on a pair of cleats and we start running alongside. We as believers are called to function as paracletes with new believers. And, and to have those come alongside of us as a paraclete to us. To encourage us. And the Holy Spirit enables us all to grow in our understanding of Jesus Christ. Of our faith. Of the scripture that has been given to us. And so the counselor in the, in the legal sense is one who is under condemnation and comes beside them, stands beside them as a counselor who goes to battle on their behalf. The Holy Spirit is that for us. The Holy Spirit is understood as an advocate in very much the same way in a legal sense and in other senses. The one that stands up and says, I speak for this one. Inspirer. The, the, the scriptures that we have were inspired by the Holy Spirit to be written and recorded and collected, and we have them here. We have the work of the Holy Spirit through humanity before us. Life. The Holy Spirit is life. I mean, consider the source of the word ruach and pneuma, that they represent spirit. Think of what it is that animates this flesh that we have. It is our spirit. Consider the wind and, and how it invigorates and it moves, though we can't see where it comes from or where it's going. Most of all, think of that if, if, when I think of the Holy Spirit as life, what do we do day in and day out that keeps us alive? We breathe out. Breath keeps us alive. We physically have to have to have respiration. We have to breathe in oxygen and expel the waste product of carbon dioxide. And we daily have to take into ourselves an understanding of, of the Holy Spirit being with us, that God is with us daily. I, you've probably seen on church signs, seven days without God makes one week, W-E-A-K. Daily we need to be Reminded that the Holy Spirit dwells within us. We need to be relying on the power of the Holy Spirit as we pour over God's word to open our hearts and enlighten our minds to see what God is speaking to our hearts. There is power in the Holy Spirit. There is life in the Holy Spirit. There is power to be found in the person and the deity and the, and, and the God that we worship. This, this unexplainable, unimaginable God that is scandalous in his grace and mercy and love to us. They don't line up with our human understanding, but he loves us so much to send his only son to die on the cross. So as we look at the Holy Spirit, in much the same way we might think that Jesus appears at the beginning of Matthew. We, we see Jesus there in, in the beginning of Matthew as it goes through his uh, chronology, his genealogy, and we say, well, that's where Jesus shows up in the Bible, but the Old Testament, there's, he's not in there at all. We might think that, so we might also think that the Holy Spirit doesn't show up until Pentecost. Jesus and the Holy Spirit were there in the beginning with God, for they are God, eternal. And so we see in Pentecost a vivid uh, coming of the Holy Spirit upon the believers, but the Holy Spirit ex has existed eternally as God, as Christ Jesus has been existent eternally 
as God, not with God, separate. Um, and, if, and I know as we've discussed the Trinity, it's something we go, I can't wrap my head around it. Uh, it is something that we as believers bring into ourselves as mystery. That's why we call what we do faith. The Spirit was there before time, eternal, with the Father and the Son, one God. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Two verses in the Bible we see specifically, explicitly, the Spirit of God is hovering over the waters. These infant oceans, these, th this void that is this coming together of the Word of God. God didn't take stuff that was already there. God spoke into being matter. And there above all of this minutes old, perhaps, creation hovered the Holy Spirit of God. Exceptional, amazing, wonderful. We, we, there is something very tangible about God in the Holy Spirit. I feel that, that in our minds, we think of God being very far away, a very, a very deist understanding of God, perhaps even in our understanding of Jesus. Jesus is far away. Two millennia ago was when he was here on earth. But we cannot move the idea of the Holy Spirit through our minds without having a tangible reaction that the Holy Spirit is with us. I don't know if that's just me. And, and so there is something very much present as when I see from the very beginning... The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that indwells me was there hovering over the oceans as they were being spoken into being. Throughout the Old Testament, even further, we see in Psalms the, the Spirit of God, how it's proceeding forth to God's people. It, it, how, how the Holy Spirit is what animated and was, and, and was, what was speaking through the prophets. The, the prophets who were the mouthpiece of God, who were teaching and telling and instructing and prophesying to the people of Israel, it was the Holy Spirit. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we move into the New Testament. The Holy Spirit, Christ, was begotten in Mary's womb by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's go to the, the third chapter of Luke, verse 21. And I want you to, if you hear really one scripture and you want to see illustrated something that is, that is tangible, that you can take with you from this look and this study, listen, go to Luke 3, 21 and 22 and hear this. Because this is, this is big, folks. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. First, little caveat, Jesus was baptized. You say we... Baptism for the remission of sins as obedience, as, a, as an outward sign of an inward grace. Why did Jesus be baptized? Why was bat Why? I'm getting excited. I apologize. Why was Jesus baptized? That Christ might be an example in all things for us. Though Christ need not be baptized, he showed us the way in obedience to baptism. So Jesus was baptized by his cousin John the Baptist. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form as a dove. So we have Christ, we have the Holy Spirit descended on him as a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son. With you I am well pleased. Brothers and sisters, we have the Trinity pictured before us at the baptism of Jesus. Jesus, the incarnation of God. God the Father speaking forth, you are my son and I am pleased with you. And in bodily form, the Holy Spirit alighting upon Christ as a dove. We have a Trinitarian understanding of God. We have an understanding that, that they are three in one. We have, we have the Holy Spirit there at Christ's baptism resting upon Jesus Christ. So this, this is where, where we, we have to kind of begin opening our minds and, and really walking through what it is that the Holy Spirit is to us. As Christ followers, we have received the Holy Spirit. That, that Christ has, upon his uh, final days here on earth before ascending, he said, I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you a counselor. I'm going to send you an advocate. I'm going I'm to send... 
unto you. And, and so we see this in Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Pentecost. Wearing my red Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. The disciples were all in one place. They were afraid that the authorities would come and find them. So they were all hiding together. Verse 2. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind. Numa, Ruach. Blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. If you are going to begin a movement of God amongst people who are seeking after God, then when the, the Feast of Pentecost is in Jerusalem. You have all these people from all over the world that speak all kinds of languages. And the disciples go out speaking the gospel of Jesus Christ in those languages. People from, from all over the world, they say, this guy's talking in my language. And he's speaking of the Messiah that has come. These people have come to Jerusalem as Jews to worship God and in hopes of of hearing what God would have to say to them about the Messiah, reading through the prophets, reading through the books of Moses. The Messiah has come and they're hearing that Messiah, that long-awaited Messiah has come. And they're hearing it in their language and they're going home bearing forth this gospel. Pentecost, the indwelling and, and the receiving of the, and the filling of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples and the, and the church, the church was born. Uh, as as a as a young man in, in youth group, I, as I recall, uh, or perhaps after that in college, I can't remember. But the imagery, I have this strong imagery of the birthday of the church and the candles were the disciples. With little flames above their head. Happy birthday to the church. The day that we were set fire by the Holy Spirit. To go and to watch the fire catch in the world. We as believers... You as a believer in Jesus Christ, if you are a believer, if, if you're here and you've been with us and you're seeking to grow in your understanding to find out what it is that, that we as Christians believe, what is this, this different life that we as a Christian are trying to, to lead? What framework are we building around our faith? What is the Holy Spirit? How is it related to anything else that we believe? This is what we're this is what we're trying to to come to an understanding as we invite Christ into our life, as Christ offers His forgiveness to us, this free gift of forgiveness of our sins. We are spiritually indwelled by the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit lives within us and enables us and seals us, guides us. Romans eight eleven it says. And if the spirit of him, and I, I, again, I know I said if you only remember one scripture, remember, please, just listen to this one, if not remember it. Romans eight eleven. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. The power of the Holy Spirit brought Jesus' dead body to life. And the glorified Christ exited the tomb alive. Jesus, the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, came out of that tomb alive. He was dead and was alive. And, the, and it was the power of the Holy Spirit that brought him to life. These words of scripture call out to us. I want, you to, I want you to consider this. The spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. The Holy Spirit rose a dead person to life. And that lives in you. God lives in you. We are not God's. We are failed and fallen human beings, loved by the God who created us, who places his spirit into us. 
And by that spirit, we are given strength and sealing and power and hope. Verse 27, I, I just I, I wanted you to grab a hold of this. I wanted you to recognize that the Holy Spirit lives in you and that spirit raised Christ from the dead. And one day will call forth to us and we shall arise from our graves and go into eternity with the Savior that bought our freedom by his blood. Verse 27, Romans 8, 27. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. When you are in your darkest place, when you're crying out to God and you just don't know what to say, the Holy Spirit intercedes for you. You know how, how, how it changes your life when somebody that you care about says, Buddy, I'm praying for you. And you go, I'm not alone. Somebody's praying for me. Somebody is storming the halls of heaven on my behalf. Folks, the Spirit intercedes for God's people. The Holy Spirit is, is praying for us. The Holy Spirit is praying through us. Those times when we're, we say, hey, I'll pray for you. And I'm going to do it right now. And we go, I don't, Lord, I don't know what to say. I don't know what's going on. And somehow we are able to lift a prayer before the throne of God that is just supernatural. It's the Holy Spirit working in us. Ruach, Numa. The, the, these things that we say in worship. Breathe on me, breath of God. Consider that. Mighty wind blow. That th th we, are, we are not merely giving vivid flowery imagery. We are asking something eternal and supernatural to occur with us. And, and, and consider, as we understand the, the understanding of these words, Ruach and Numa, as wind and breath and spirit, in the beginning, God breathed. Life into us. He spoke as and we see words, utterance of breath. He spoke into being creation. I read through these things and I, 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 and I am just, I can't see these things and, and not be unbelievably amazed at this. That the words of God is what spoke creation into being. And by words, at least in human understanding, it's done through breath. That the Holy Spirit, there at creation. Now, we also understand that, that Scripture, the Word of God, is God-breathed. Spoken by God. This, this Old Testament and New Testament was breathed by God, was spoken by by God, by the Holy Spirit, inspired those who recorded this. As we assembled it together into the scripture canon, the Holy Spirit. Like how, how can you trust in, in this document that was written by people because these people were inspired by the Holy Spirit and I'll follow the Holy Spirit anywhere. Because anywhere that is anywhere has been breathed by the word of God, his breath. The Spirit of God is with us. The Spirit of God is upon us. The Spirit of God is within us. If you're going, hey, Rev. Benji, you're getting kind of loud. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you settle down a little bit? The fact is, I can't. There's, there is something invigorating when I consider the Holy Spirit. That, that this gift of grace and mercy that has been extended to me that I'm indwelled by the Holy Spirit, that there is something enacted in me that is of God. I, I, I cannot look in the mirror and say this person deserves any good thing. I've been with me most of my life. I've seen the things that I've done, the harm that I've said with words, the harms I've done with my hands. Yet God would forgive me and give me his spirit. That he would breathe his breath into me. That he would blow the wind of the spirit over me. That, that, that he would seal me as his own. A, a sinner like me would find a friend in Christ. That would find the love of God. That the spirit and power of God would be manifested in me as a believer. The same is of you. 
It's why we, we wear robes as this such on occasion, as a reminder not that we're anyone special up here behind a pulpit, but that we are all, every one of us, granted righteousness as if a robe is placed upon our shoulders, a robe that's not ours, but Christ's. And it's placed upon us, and we no longer have the filthy rags of our sin, but what God sees in us is Christ's righteousness. And, and the Holy Spirit in us enables us as we go about our daily life to speak words of life. Where words came forth that caused death and destruction, the Spirit of God in us gives life. The Spirit works through us. The words that we speak, the steps that we take, the acts of grace and love, we do so by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works on us. We need some work done on us. Amen? It, the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. It stirs us to repentance. It stirs us to be people who forgive. Is there a greater gift that we can offer to somebody who has wronged us than forgiveness for we have been forgiven greatly may we also be people who forgive the, the spirit works with us we are granted strength we are rooted in love we look in in the innumerable passes passages of scripture that give us understanding of how the spirit works in us and there's one in particular that i want you to go to and i want you to spend time reading it's ephesians chapter 3 and I'm only going to read a, a portion of this that, that we might see how the Spirit is enacting in us. I want you to set time aside this week. I'm going to have you a little homework. Read just Ephesians chapter 3. That, that we might be rooted and established in love. That we might be people who, ha, ha, that the mystery of God would be made known in us through our life. That the Holy Spirit would speak through us. That would give opportunities for people to see the grace in our life. It's an exceptional thing that we could see the work of God made in us. So in beginning in chapter beginning in chapter 3 in verse 14 Paul to the, is praying a prayer to the church in Ephesus. For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit. We gain strength through the spirit. We gain power through the Spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, not through works. We don't have to earn this salvation. That's what's so wild, so hard for us to believe. It is given freely. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, as a building is built upon a foundation, as a tree's roots anchor it through any storm, may that be for us love. May have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And it, and it goes on. I could, I could sit here and read this all day. But that's your homework. The Spirit enables us to see the grace of the cross. If today you, you are bearing witness to something that you would seek to, to give words to, to give breath to. If the Spirit is working in you and upon you. That, that indeed Jesus Christ is who he said he is. That he is the Messiah. That by his death and his resurrection by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can be forgiven. You can begin a life of, of discipleship with him in this faith community or in another faith community that, that brings to bear and before you the word of God. I would ask that you would come before Christ today and confess him as your Savior. Say, Lord, I ask that you would forgive me. I believe that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you were raised from the dead. That you are God in flesh. And I would seek to become your disciple. That I would follow you. That I would give you 
direction of my life and that indeed you are my Lord and you are my Savior. Today is a day of decision. Today is a day of change. That today we can see transformation change in our life through the power of the Holy Spirit. May the Spirit of God dwell richly in you. May you be rooted and established in love through the Holy Spirit, the breath, the wind, the Spirit of God upon you all. Let us go forth into the world empowered by the Holy Spirit to spread the gospel of grace and love. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.